hello everyone in this video we are going to create this chrome effect with the geometry nodes in blender 4.4 so let's get start uh, first i'll explain the concept uh, for this effect we need two masks uh, one from the outer boundary of the mesh and the second mask from the object and we need to combine these two masks to get the desired mask for the chrome effect okay first we're going to build this effect for a plane and then we're going to generalize this effect for any 2d object based on the curves like a logo or text okay so let's start first we're going to add a plane and then we need to subdivide this plane keep that in mind the higher the number of subdivisions generate a smooth mass okay so let me add one more okay something like that and then we're going to add the geometry nodes modifier first we're going to create the mask based on the outer boundary of this mesh so let's add the separate geometry node change that to edges and after that we need to add the equal node and then we need the edge neighbors so let's change this to two so basically uh, we are looking at the outer edges of this mesh let me zoom this out see we want to separate this open edge so we have this and we have this outer boundary edge and this method will work for any shape okay let me show you this if i go to edit mode and add a hole here let me delete these and now let's see we have this boundary and then we're going to add the proximity node to get the mask change that to edges and let's connect this to the distance see we have this mask based on the boundary of this mesh now before we continue you can use this mask to create a bevel effect to the mesh now let me show you this add the ks displace node for your information uh, the fall of node and the utility nodes are available freely with the extra nodes i'll add the link in the video description okay so let me add that here and plug that into this so let's hide that see you have this kind of bevel to this mesh based on this mask okay so we have this mask and let me show you the effect if we add the math node and then we need to add the fraction change that to fraction so if we check the growth of this mask this is uniform see it is not taking into account these edges like it should like bend or interact with these edges so we need to create that mask that interact with the edges to get the desired result for the chrome effect okay so and another mask we need to generate from the object so let's add an empty object maybe a sphere so let's place that here then we need to bring that empty object here change that to relative and for this mask it is really easy just add the distance vector distance node and just calculate the distance from this empty for every point of this a mesh see uh, we have this mask let me bring this okay it is based on this empty object and if we check the growth of this see it is uniform from this empty object it is not interacting with the corners of this mesh like it should be a bend or twist based on the corners of the geometry okay so let's combine them to get that result so first we need to add the displace node so we need to apply this mask to the geometry see it is applied and after that we're going to calculate this mask okay the second mask and if i add this so you will see see there is small distortion in the mask uh, we can enhance this effect by changing the profile of this mask so first add the float node the float curve node and let me place this here 0.25 and then add the 0.75 so let me show you the profile so we have something like this so this is before and this is after after that we need to add 
another node that is going to be the power okay and we need to put that exponent 0.5 this is before and this is after so now if we calculate the mass uh, that is based on the object we have something like this see this distortion in the mass uh, near to the corners of the geometry so that's what we want for the chrome effect and we can change this profile by moving this empty object along the z axis okay be around 1.5 now we have this kind of effect now we have this proper mask for the chrome effect uh, so first we need to transfer this mask uh, to the original geometry so let's add the store node uh, we're going to store this mask onto the original geometry so here we're going to add the sample index node and let me delete this and here we're going to sample this mask based on the index because uh, we have the same number of vertices only we have changed their position we haven't changed their order so we can use the index node to transfer this mask uh, from this geometry to the original geometry okay so type here mask and let me add the named attribute node copy this here then add the add node then add the fraction and let's see now this mask is on the original geometry nice so now let's add the material to this so first we're going to build the material for this and after that we're going to modify this setup so that we can use this for any 2d shape okay so let me add the material to this okay add the material so first we need to bring the mask so let's add the mask here so we have this mask then we're going to add the add node and after that we're going to add the fraction see we have this mask uh, we can change that to subtract so it is going outward okay nice so now let's add the multiply node and after that we going to add the value node so in the value we going to add the driver for the frame so we have this time and here we can control the speed of the flow let's call this speed maybe two five and here we're going to add the color ramp node and let's add the colors here So let's see and what we can do we can basically expand this rainbow or contract this rainbow by using the float curve node so let's add the float curve node so let me change this to see here you can do this okay and after this uh, we can add the hue saturation node so that we can control the color as well as the saturation for this maybe 0.75 and here you can basically change the color for this okay so let's add this make it metallic roughness maybe 0 0.05 and then we're going to add the clear coat and also add the sheen maybe a blue Okay, so we have something like this okay uh, we can change this material later okay and another thing you can do is that we can add the multiply node here change that to multiply 
so you can basically add the number of more waves or decrease the number of waves okay so here we're going to use 0.5 okay so let me see so let's also decrease the speed point zero one five okay nice uh, because it is procedural we can add even a uh, more hole to this control b and read this see it is interactive okay now let's make it more general so that we can use any 2d shape based on the curves uh, for this effect okay so let me add the reroute here okay so for the curve first we need to build uh, the remesher basically 2d remesher and after that we're going to use that geometry uh, for this okay so let's add the s to curve node so we can type any string here maybe let's say extra nodes then we need to realize this okay now they are real geometry after that we need to add the fill curve node uh, based on the n-gons so we have something like this okay let me change that to center and also make this to middle after that we need the transform geometry so that we can shift this uh, we need to slightly move this down because we're going to use this as a boolean cutter okay next we need the grid okay and after that we need the subdivision so here the grid uh, let me combine this uh, uh, let me also combine this as this so this is basically the viewer so that we can view the grid with respect to the curve so let's increase the x-axis so that it properly cover this text maybe let's say 5.5 .5. so we're going to add 10 subdivisions along the y-axis let me show you the number of subdivisions okay and for the x-axis we have 5.5 so we can type 5.5 into 10 so we need 55 to get this square grid pattern for this okay and after that uh, we can easily increase the number of subdivisions uh, with this subdivide mesh node okay so we have this grid after that we need the extrude node and we want to extrude the faces of this so we have this and we're going to use this mesh as a cutter so let's add the boolean node change that to intersect so we have this and also change that to exact okay if i go to the wireframe we have this nice grid remesh for this uh, text okay so basically before this so this is our remesh setup for this okay so this is so here you can input the curves directly if they are instance then you need to use the realize instances node okay and after that we can also add the bake node and with this node we can also increase the performance so let me go to the first frame and bake this okay now it is baked and we can use this as input so let's see the effect and let me move this subject here see we have this chrome effect on the text and another thing we can also do is that we can also add the bake note here after the displace note okay we can also bake this because we are not changing this displacement okay 
so now it is real time and let me go to the shading or uh, let me show you the mask so this is the mask and this is the color based on this mask and you can also add another node that is the invert basically we can invert the mask so we have this kind of effect okay see now we have this chrome effect for this uh, text so let's add a different shape uh, for this uh, we have this text object now let's add a curve circle that we're going to combine with this uh, let's add the join geometry node okay and then combine this with this and after that plug this into this uh, see we have this uh, let me decrease the radius of this circle and also increase the number of resolution of this So now we have this chrome effect on the combined shape based on the curves. Uh, basically, you can input any 2D geometry provided that it has a uniform topology. Like in this case, we have to build this 2D remeasure uh, for this plane. We have subdivided this uniformly. Okay, so that will generate this really nice effect. If you want to create this kind of effect for any 3D shape, then you can utilize my dynamic paint preset. It generates the dynamic mask for any object, whether it is 2D or 3D. So this is it. You can get the project files from my Patreon page. If you learn something from this video, then please like and share the video and subscribe to my channel for more updates. So thank you for watching. See you in the next video. Happy nodding. Bye.